All right, well, you are likely already enjoying the holiday food, but as we head toward a new year, Cleveland Clinic Research may help you nail down a new resolution. Yeah, they're all coming around January 1st. We all decide that now our health is super important to us. <laughs> like it's not in July, but right. for some reason, this is the ritual that we all participate in, especially for those um, who eat a lot of meat. You're gonna wanna listen to this. Senior health correspondent Monica Robbins joins us now. Um, I, I, I really have to pay attention because I'm a meat eater. I love meat. I uh, don't really get all the vegetables I should, but you're telling us that's that's a problem. Yeah, veggies on the table are always good to have, okay? <laughs> the more, the merrier. So, yeah, but now Cleveland Clinic Research found a chemical made in your gut from protein can actually lead to heart failure. So when you eat protein, your gut microbes eat it too. Now, those microbes then create a byproduct called a metabolite. That isn't good because that chemical gets into your intestines and it can lead to heart failure. The more protein you eat, the higher your risk. This metabolite comes from protein. And so while we have not yet uh, completed the studies in humans where we're changing protein content in the diet and looking at the pathway, this raises the possibility that by changing the amount of protein in your diet, you might change the the level of how much this is made, this compound called PAG. PAG stands for phenylacetylglutamine, which is what the metabolite is known as, and the gut microbes create. So Dr. Hazen isn't saying cut out protein, but he is suggesting maybe cutting back and adding more vegetables to your diet, which is always a good thing. Maybe eat vegetarian once a week, especially if you are at high risk for heart disease. Earlier research found high levels of PAG can lead to heart disease, stroke, and death. This particular study focused just on heart failure alone. More research is going on, but the hope is doctors may use a blood test to check for PAG levels in the future or even create a drug to block PAG from even being made. They already know beta blockers do have the ability to block the effects of PAG, but the levels of this chemical are dose dependent, meaning the more meat you eat, the higher your levels, Jay. Mm -hmm. Now, are you going to tell it the way that you told us in the newsroom? No, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm so, I, I'm always looking for analogies, and the analogy I came up with was quite creative, and, um, but I hope I explained it well enough that everybody kind of gets where, where I'm coming from. Um, the last decade or so, one of the buzzwords is gut health, mm -hmm. and you see all these ads for probiotics, and mm -hmm. it's one of those things where when I see them, I wonder, should I be taking that? I feel like I'm in good health, but... I don't, what's the deal with the probiotics? So Dr. Hazen will tell you, ah, you're wasting your money, get your probiotics from the produce section. And, and he's not wrong. If we all had perfect diets, then absolutely. But a lot of doctors would disagree and say, yeah, if you can take probiotics, you should be taking them. But keep in mind, this particular study is about having more microbes in your guts or better ones. This is about what you feed those microbes and how it impacts your health down the line. So it really doesn't matter if you're taking probiotics or not. It's what you're actually eating and feeding your gut bacteria that can impact your health down the road. Wow. It, you are what you eat. That's what they say. That's what they say, and <laughs> they're not wrong. To borrow up phrase. Right. I wonder if Russ Mitchell will say that to you at six. We'll have to wait and listen. Stay tuned. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. <laughs> sure.